Colby, congratulations on your victory this evening. Uh, obviously, it was a very uh, emotional week. People chanting at you, yelling at you, cussing at you, all that. And, and uh, you know, you kind of proved all the doubters wrong. Give me an idea just what the emotions like, the feelings like to, to have that gold belt that you said you'd have. Uh, I did everything I said I was going to do. I told everybody I was going to make the welterweight division great again, and now I'm going to celebrate how a real American should celebrate winning a world title, and that's going to the White House to see Mr. Donald Trump put this on his desk, unlike the, the Philadelphia Eagles disrespecting our country's flag by kneeling for the national anthem. What's more personally satisfying for you? I mean, every, every fighter is working towards a UFC title, and now you have one. I mean, is it that personal accomplishment and satisfaction, or is it... You know, all the haters and all the doubters and everybody that said you wouldn't do it, you know, being able to kind of shut them up, basically. Yeah, it just I said everything I was going to do. You know, I, I don't think there's very many media in here that picked me to win this fight. Definitely all the nerds on Instagram and, tw and Twitter didn't pick me to win this fight. So it's good to shut them all up, you know. The nerd tears, is, it's a great feeling. <sighs> Your game plan obviously was relentless aggression, wrestling. You, you stuck to it for the full 25 minutes. When I ask, you know, how the fight played out versus your expectations, uh, you know, he did have a couple of great moments. He even took you down a couple of times. How did it play out versus what you thought? Uh, you know, he, he did a lot better than I thought he would do. I, I thought I was going to melt him within two rounds, but he's got good cardio, a lot better than Tyrone Woodley. So, you know, it, it was a good fight. You know, we put on a good show for the fans. The last thing for me, Colby, you know, Tyron took to social media right away and said, listen, let's, let's do this. Let's get it done. Um, give me an idea. I mean, what's your condition right now, your health? I mean, how fast could you turn around after a five-round battle like that and have this unification fight? Uh, you know, I'm looking at uh, is the Madison Square Garden card in uh, November? Yeah, should be. Yeah, so I'm looking around that time frame, you know. Uh, I put in a lot for this camp, so I want to keep getting better. You know, I'm getting better every time you see me. I'm putting a lot of work in Muay Thai, so, you know, the guy's a fake, man. He's out there spitting bars. You should go listen to that, man. If you guys think you hate me now, go listen to him try to do his rap album right now. That's a joke. So, besides that, you know, he's, he's doing his little gossip stuff in Hollywood. He's doing these little B-list ro movie roles that go straight to DVD. He's doing anything but fight, and that's why I'm here. I'm making this welterweight division great again. Hi, Colby. I'm, I'm wondering if you've been able to talk to Dana. When he was here, he said he could get you into the White House. Uh, I haven't got to talk to Dana. You know, I talked to Dan Lambert. He has that connection to get me in there, too. So, you know, I think we're going to talk after this conference and uh, definitely get me into the White House and put this on Trump's desk. And uh, explain what's going on with this water bottle. Does that say nerd tears on side? Yeah, this does say nerd tears. All the people out there that uh, doubted me, all the nerds and virgins, which is mostly my haters, this is for them, you know. They're all crying on social media right now. They're all complaining. They're probably saying, you know, oh, RDA is a washed up lightweight. No one gives me credit. I guess I just, all I do is talk. I, don't, I can't fight and prove it. Colby, congratulations, of course, on the win. Uh, you obviously are a strong wrestler, but you did show other facets to your game tonight. Was that part of the plan, or were you surprised that, you know, maybe RDA resists a little bit and you had to switch things up a little bit? Because you did show more just your wrestling. Yeah, I wanted to come and show that I'm the most well-rounded fighter on the planet, and that's what I did tonight. I can now strike anybody. My pace alone is, is unstoppable. No one can keep with my pace, and, and Tyrone Woodley's felt that in the gym. He knows it. You know, he's tired at home. He's probably still out of breath. With that matchup being next, I mean, how, how do you see that fight going down? How do you see yourself you know, matching up with Tyrone? Uh, it's an easy matchup for me, man. I've trained hundreds and hundreds of rounds sparring an American top team with me. So I know how he fights. He's real predictable. All he has is a right hand. He's got no gas tank. He backs up and fights. People are scared of his power. I'm not scared of his power. I'll go right into his power. I'll get him in the clinch. I'll do whatever I want with him. I'll finish him inside three rounds. Mark my words. I know there was a little bit of awkwardness with some of the Brazilian teammates at American top team. How do you think they're going to react with, you know, you and Tyron? I know Tyron doesn't really train at the Coconut Creek gym, but, you know, he still represents ATT. Yeah, you know, he doesn't really train at ATT Coconut Creek. He has his little ATT affiliate in St. Louis. Uh, he's training at Duke Rufus. That's where he does his camps now. He just He's just trying to stay cool with Dan Lambert. You know, Dan's the man, so of course he doesn't want to burn that bridge. But, you know, I think the Brazilian teammates, you know, I think they're going to be the same way they were. They don't want to train with me because all the favela masters in, in Brazil want them dead. And if they see that they're training with me, you know, that's not going to be a good look for them. So... You know, it's, it's no hard feelings. You know, we have nothing but love around the gym at ATT. It's just business now. And, uh, you know, obviously Tyron's the next guy on the list, but, you know, you've never shied away from, you know, calling other fights, asking for other fighters. One guy who's out there at welterweight, or hopefully at welterweight again one day, is George St. Pierre. And I heard that, that that's a fight you might be interested in at some point. 
Yeah, I'm definitely interested in GSP, that Serb sucking Canadian. I'll, st I'll bury him right where he stands. Colby, congratulations. Uh, right here. Congratulations on the victory. Were you surprised that there were some Colby chants going on this evening? Uh, no, not surprised at all. I think these people now finally get what I'm doing, and, and I'm putting on entertaining shows for the fans. And I think people are, I'm probably going to turn to a baby fight for my next fight because nobody likes Tyrone Woodley. That guy's too busy gossiping about the Kardashians. He's in Hollywood on his little TMZ stint. So I think people are going to really embrace me, you know, as making this division great again like I am. Thank you. Actually, uh, speaking of that, and congrats, Colby. Thanks. Looking at the replies on Tyron's two tweets about you, overwhelmingly positive in his favor. And, and so I wonder if you feel like you're almost doing him a favor here because, you know, for his last few fights, the fans have been kind of against him, but they're all saying, you know, shut him up, beat him up, things like that. Yeah, he could try. You know, the same thing went for RDA tonight. They all still said, hey, shut him up. But now he's the most wanted man in, in the world right now. Everybody hates him. So everybody hates me. So now that he lost to me, he's not going to be able to show his face in Brazil anymore. So, you know, Tyron Woodley, same thing. You know, everybody, the same thing's going to happen to him, the same fate, you know, and they're going to turn on him after I beat him. Does this really feel to you like you're the champion? Like, is this the feeling that you dreamed of when, when, you, when you dreamed of becoming a champion? Or do you feel like you'll only feel that way once you beat him? Uh, this is the undisputed strap. You know, he had a chance to fight me last December. He was good to fight Nate Diaz. He was good to fight GSP, but, you know, he couldn't get his money fight, and all of a sudden he needs preventative shoulder surgery that he waited eight months to get after Damian Maya. So this is the real strap. He has the paper strap. Now he knows I'm the money fight. I, I built that fight, you know, and, and no one wants to see him. They want to see me. And just uh, one more thing. You've uh, seemed to have drawn the ire of your former roommate, John Jones, uh, he was tweeting a lot about you, and uh, I'm wondering if you had any response to some of the things he was saying. Uh, no comment on John Jones. He is who he is. What do you mean by that? I mean, he's he's done what he's done for himself. You know, I have no, nothing further to say. This is the real belt, so, you know, I don't have anything to say about him. Thanks. Colby, over here. You're talking about the potential fight with Tyron Woodley. You mentioned some of the teammates who you know, weren't very happy with you. Is there any concern preparing for Tyron that maybe some disgruntled teammates who have ties to Tyron Woodley, you know, there may be some type of relay of information? Uh, no, you know, I'm going to definitely, Dan Lambert will make sure that, you know, we get private training. We're not going to do it when everybody's watching. You know, I got great training partners, Dustin Poirier, Jorge Masvidal, my best friend. He's the best look for Tyron Woodley. So, you know, we'll do private training on certain times when no one's in the gym. So it won't be a problem. American Top Team's so, so big. You know, Dan Lambert built a mecca of unbelievable gym out there. So there's tons of space, unlimited space. So I'm not worried about them. And speaking of Dan Lambert, you know, before you came over to the media table and call us all nerds, you had a great embrace with him when you left the cage. Can you just describe to us what it means to bring that belt back to Dan and to American Top Team? It's everything that I told him the day I got to American Top Team. You know, I've, I was born and raised in American Top Team. I left college. <clears throat> he gave me an opportunity to come down to American Top Team, and, you know, he's taken me in like a son. And... And I can't thank Dan, Dan enough, you know, to do this from, you know, the ground up. There's not many fighters that do that. Most of the fighters, they, they train and then they come to other big gyms. You know, I started American Top Team. I was grown. I was born and raised there. So it was an unbelievable moment to see, you know, my agent, Dan Lambert, and the owner of our gym, American Top Team. And, and I'm just, I'm proud that I could bring this belt and put it in the mantle right in the front of American Top Team. Thanks, Colby. Hi, um, I understand um, your, your fervent support of Trump and of the anthem, but uh, are you aware that none of the Eagles ever kneeled? Uh, I'm not aware of that, but what did they do? Didn't they not come out for the national anthem? They stayed in the tunnel or something? No, that, that uh, hasn't gone into effect yet. The most is um, uh, one of the players raised his fist and, um, and one, of the, one of his white teammates put his hand on his shoulder. Well, I am aware that they, you know, turned down their invitation to go see Trump, and that's a big slap in the face to America. I mean, there's all the brave men and women of America that put their lives on the line so they could have their freedoms that, to eat out of their silver spoons. They've been, you know, the, the, the NFL players get so much leeway and so much money for, you know, such a joke. So, 
You know, it's, it's, it's a joke that they turned out America. They wouldn't have their freedoms. Try going, try going to Puerto Rico. Let's see uh, how, how well they would do over there if they would make that kind of money. So, you know, it's a big slap in the face and disrespectful to America to turn down Trump's invitation. Well, uh, understand that, um, you know, what they're saying is they're doing it for social justice um, for minorities uh, to be uh, treated equally. In a, uh, what do you say on that front? <coughs> because a lot of times people don't raise this issue with uh, other athletes that take issue with it. Last time I checked, they weren't paid all that money to be political people. They were paid to play football. So I got to say, if I see them in the streets, I'm probably going to slap them. Okay. Any more questions? Okay, thank you.